indeed there are people of other religions that believe in the Christian story. It's just a web. So, location and upbringing equals information people download from the earliest ages that then becomes their either conscious or unconscious belief system. And this story of G Jesus, Christmas, Easter and the way it's accepted to be true when it's not the way festivals are believed to be because of this when they're not is just a classic um, example of how people take on perceptions for no other reason than where they were born where they were brought up the environment in other words information download to which they were subjected as they were brought up and the repetition, repetition, repetition of information which becomes a belief system. And if there's um, one New Year's resolution that would change people's lives and change collectively human society, it would be if people stopped taking their beliefs unquestioningly off the shelf stop downloading their perceptions from others and start with a blank sheet of paper and say anything comes on here has to go through my filter my research my feeling my intuition whatever and only then does it get on this piece of paper in other words only then do I accept its validity in um, becoming part of my perception and I tell you what if people did that on a vast scale, if people did that just individually they would be shocked at how much they have believed consciously and again unconsciously during their life that had no validity whatsoever and if more do that, then more will see through the perception deception that keeps the human race in such unquestioning servitude. So let's go and um, take some questions of I tell them many and various kinds. Um, this is from um, Mickey, Mikey, Mickey. Uh, is that it says um, do you have any information about the so-called Morgellons and what are your thoughts well funnily enough um, I've uh, just had a new book published called Phantom Self brackets and how to find the real one and there's a chapter in that which I think is possibly the most important chapter I've ever written and um, Morgellons um, is connected into that tapestry of information that's pulled together in that chapter. Um, it relates to transhumanism and assimilating the human race into technology. It relates to chemtrails, um, these um, chemical trails that come from um, aircraft systematically into the atmosphere which has been going on now for decades and what's in them they have been um, analysed and metals and poisons have been found in them quite systematic they are cumulatively destroying human health and destroying the environment Things like aluminium are, are in them. But what is less talked about, but I talk about in some detail in Phantom Self, is they also contain nanotechnology. 
Um, and nanotechnology is well beyond the ability of anyone to see it so small. And it can be breathed in. And what happens with um, sufferers of this condition called Morgellons, which started to appear just as the chemtrails began, is that they have these synthetic um, the synthetic material come up through the skin. And... Um, has a life of its own. It's it's um, it, it seems to have the ability to, um, to 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 think and respond. And they 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 pull one out that comes through the skin. These fibers, these synthetic fibers, and and then there's another one, another one, and they replicate. And um, I have. Um, seen it suggested, and I think this may well be correct, that everyone is breathing this stuff in, and it's being assimilated and absorbed by most people. But what we call sufferers of Morgellons are people whose immune system is rejecting it and fighting it, thus um, we see what happens with Morgellons patients. If you go on to a, a, um, a picture search engine and put in Morgellons disease, then you'll see exactly what I'm talking about and what people are suffering around the world. Um, they have this crawling sensation um, under the skin. Um, things moving inside their bodies. I mean, it's extraordinary. Horrible. Um, and when you put the pieces together, um, it's very, very clear that what's in chemtrails and Morgellons disease are fundamentally uh, connected. And what I do in Phantom Self is go into why this is happening and what the end goal is of what is happening. And that's why I feel it's the most important chapter I've ever written in terms of seeing where all this I won't say multiple conspiracy because in the end it's one conspiracy but this multifaceted global conspiracy is actually designed to go and um, it will shock a lot of people but knowing it is having the ability to avoid it and that's the whole point of what I do. Not to be proved right. Oh, that David Icke said this. I, 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 I. That is not the goal. The goal is to alert people so that it stops happening. And that's, um, and that's what keeps me going year after year after year. Okay, next one. Um, what are your views concerning remote viewing? That's from Peter Marshall. Um, remote viewing is um, is a fact and, and can be explained. Um, remote viewing came to light when um, government intelligence insiders some time ago now started talking about the fact that they were involved in remote viewing um, projects within the military and within the intelligence uh, networks. And remote viewing relates to being able, for instance, for someone, say me, sitting here now, and to um, project my, what I would call, point of attention somewhere else, into a room, into another location. And through that um, relocating of my point of attention, be able to see and hear what's going on there. And one of the big reasons why the reality of remote viewing makes perfect sense is that what is happening as I sit here, as you sit there, is that our infinite level of awareness 
is projecting its point of attention into this reality, into this body, holographic projection. And being able to not only see and hear in this location, but interact with it. And um, most you know, the, the, the basics of remote viewing is exactly that, except there's not the interaction. Um, and so remote viewing is just a, a smaller, lesser version of what we call human life. And when this body projection ceases to be at what we call death, then the point of attention moves, relocates, and we continue with our eternity. That's why when people say to me, well, who are we then? We are infinite awareness having an experience. We are infinite awareness that has focused its attention upon this tiny band of frequency that we call the human world, the physical world. And uh, so remote viewing from that perspective is perfectly straightforward. It's just a, um, a lesser version of that. And it allows um, people in the um, military and the intelligence community to literally see and listen to things when they're not even at that location. And I remember I, I spoke at an event in um, San Francisco, one of these big um, kind of new age festivals called them Expos. I don't think they're going now. But this was back in the 1990s. And um, a lady came up to me and she said, I'd, um, I just want to talk to you. I said, my husband, I didn't need, her husband had died by then, but um, she was quite young actually. Um, she said, my husband was um, recruited into the American military psychic assassination squad. Which caused my ears prick up. What do you mean? And she told me the story. When people go into the military and they're doing various tests and assessments, one of the things they're looking for are those with powerful psychic ability. And the most powerful um, are recruited into various um, areas of this esoteric um, area of military intelligence operation. And some will be turned into what they call remote viewers to do what I'm, I'm talking about here. And others um, are recruited into the psychic assassination squads. And what she said, um, this is, like I say, will really be, be about 96, 97. She said what they used to do was sit around a table with a picture of someone they, were, they wanted to assassinate and they would just, as an example, get all of these people that have been recruited into the squad to focus on the picture and um, focus on stopping the person's heartbeat. And it worked. And of course that, that person's then taken out and no one says, oh, they, it was a psychic assassination squad. No, they say, well, yeah, heart attack. And the reason that it works is because everything is frequency. And when you take a picture of someone, you might see their, their body, their holographic projection on the picture, fair enough. But what that picture contains is the frequency of the energetic field of that projection. And so by focusing on the picture in the way that they do, that's vibrating. The picture's vibrating to a certain frequency, which is the frequency of the person in the picture. And what they're then doing is tuning themselves, their point of attention, into that frequency. 
at which point they have made a frequency connection with that person's, if you like, real self, or holographic self. And um, these projections are, on one level, electrical and electromagnetic. And so there's this electrical, electromagnetic connection now between the psychic assassination squad and the person in the picture. And um, what makes a heartbeat? Electricity. Electromagnetic electrical focus can affect um, electrical um, systems, including those of the heart. And you know when um, you hear these ghost stories um, and um, these um, so-called paranormal stories, which I also go into in Phantom Self, because it's very important for people to see how this works, for many various reasons. Um, so often these ghost stories and ghostly happenings relate to electrical technology. Like when I um, went 25, 26 years ago to see a psychic called Betty Shine, um, she told me then um, that um, often when she was in psychic mode and there was lots of this connection going on with other realities, um, things like the um, record player would turn on and off. And when I had my um, ayahuasca experience um, in um, the Brazilian rainforest in 2003 and this stupendous energy was coming through me and just extraordinary um, I was in a darkened room on my own with well on my own with one person sitting in a chair and um, it was pitch black you can imagine with no lights on in the middle of the Brazilian rainforest and they had these strip lights all around the top all around the it was a circle and um, as this energy built up, and it was so powerful, I felt it coming through here. Um, I didn't say anything to anybody, or the only one person I could say anything to. But there was music playing, and the record player started to um, malfunction. It turned itself off, it turned itself on. And then, one of the strip lights came on. And then two, and then three. And I'm, I'm, I'm lying there with this energy coming through me, and I'm thinking, what's he turning the bloody lights on for? But he hadn't. He was still sitting here. And what it was, was this energy coming through me, which was electrical, electromagnetic, was affecting the electrical systems of, of the building. And that's why so much ghostly activity um, relates to strange happenings with electrical equipment like lights, all the lights flashed on and off. This is what, this is what it is. And um, it's why through sheer focus of attention these people could stop people's hearts beating. Um, so in terms of the question of remote viewing it's the same principle. You know, life's so much more fascinating when you look beyond the norm. Um, uh, Mo, Mola Jeffa, Mola Jeffa, sorry about that if I got it wrong, Mola Jeffa uh, Mahasi, do you think Donald Trump will bring change or the same agenda will still unfold? Well, I think he's part of the agenda, Donald Trump. Um, first of all, um, you don't become what he's claimed to be a multi billionaire unless you're acceptable, at the very least, acceptable to the system. Because if you're not acceptable to the system, then the system will bring you down. Because you can't get that amount of money without the system's okay with it. Um, and uh, he has come in. He's a friend of the Clintons, by the way, who is running for the other party, Hillary Clinton. And um, he's coming out with these uh, claims and saying what should be done in a way that's creating fear, it's creating divide and rule, it's turning people, for instance, against the Muslim community as a whole, and it's 
again, um, going off in a direction that ignores what's really happening, which is all this Muslim terrorism and um, wars against Muslim countries is, um, is, is engineered for a specific outcome, which I talk about at length. And um, it can be quite, I wouldn't say shocking, but a bit depressing sometimes to see how easy it is to manipulate scam and Pied Piper. Even some in the alternative research community who um, have supported much or some of what Trump is saying. It's like there's a default position and the default position is um, the I'm an American program, the I'm a Christian program, the I'm a this program. And, and it's like a default position. 